So is this a game changer? Will it bring virtual reality firmly into the mainstream or perhaps perhaps help to make virtual and virtual future a reality? Joining me to discuss that, Elizabeth Clark, founder and CEO of Dream Agility. It's a Manchester-based AI company that develops ads for the metaverse. And Kate Bevan, technology writer, bit of a VR sceptic, I think. We'll get on to that. Welcome, both of you. Good evening. Hello. Hi. Well, Look, Elizabeth, first of all, let's start with this new bit of gear. What do you think about it? Oh, I love it. I was sat there watching the demo and I just thought, this is fantastic. It's got all the bits right with it that's wrong with a MetaQuest. MetaQuest, it's got the eyes covered and you can't see out of it. It's a big, bulky, heavy thing. What's worse about it is you've got these hand things you've got to put in your hands and mess about with. None of that with this. It's like mission impossible. Everything pops up in front of you. You can zoom it in, zoom it out. Just use your fingers in fresh air to get around things. Connect all your devices to it. My 10-year-old would love this. He sits. He's got his gaming monitor and he sits with his iPad and his iPhone. And yesterday I came and he had ear pods under his headphones. And he said to me, Mommy, I just need something that connects all this stuff. So this would be it. This would be it for him. He'd be over the moon. Right. Uh, yes, I think you're quite enthusiastic, aren't you? Uh, Kate, what about what, you? What do you make of it? Um, well, I think Apple is very good at um, taking some stuff that's gone before and remixing it and producing shiny, interesting kit. Um, I know that they're sort of focusing it on the AR, the augmented reality, rather than the VR. So it's not a gaming thing. And a lot of these, as Elizabeth says, are actually the existing ones are very much gaming devices. And that's perhaps why they failed. I mean, I have my doubts about this because um, although it's a very much sleeker iteration of the sort of dirty great lump of plastic that you strap to your face than previous <laughs> examples have been, I'm just... I, I'm just not sure we're there yet with it. It feels like Apple has been watching what's been going on in this space and has just been a bit slow to catch up with it and has now come up with something that that remixes it for sure but doesn't really have a compelling use case. Although, Kate, I mean, people were sceptical about the iPad, the, the iPhone, the Apple Watch, and they've taken on. That's true. Um, as I say, Apple is good at sort of, you know, building on the, the previous work by other people. I mean, maybe when I'm a very old lady in like 20 years time, we'll all be sort of living in VR and AR and I'll, you can come back to me and say, <laughs> we're completely wrong about this. But as I say, we just had to, there isn't really a use case for it yet. And also, I know this is a first generation thing, but my goodness, the price. I mean, I reckon when it gets to the UK, it'll be well over 4,000 4, quid by the time you've added VAT to it. And honestly, I don't see anybody except the most devoted people having a go at this yeah elizabeth the price is pretty prohibitive to making it a big mainstream device isn't it apart from anything else it is but if you look at mac users they're all very dedicated because they like the technology it works it's good it's not clunky and 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 they're prepared to you know try new things and pay more for it and if you're in a multi-screen environment like when we have meetings um they we we, the stuff we have to look at on a big screen and then you also have your laptop in front of you in in a multi-screen environment we'll be able to do this you'd actually be able to set it at a distance that suits you and be able to point things out to other people so in terms of multi-screen environments i think it'd be fantastically useful particularly with people working in different environments they are trying to kind of push it as a as a business tool because it's got that kind of business price point hasn't it um so that's but, is that what, but but i mean more broadly this these visions for us all you know living in the metaverse i mean does this bring it any closer is it really any any closer to reality well, at least you can see with this one. It's not like having the MetaQuest of my husband staggering around the house, crashing into me while he's playing around golf. I have to sh- shout directions to no left of it, right of it, so that you can see. A virtual with this round one. of golf, I think we should a probably vir- uh, yes, be clear. <laughs> with his virtual golf club, his little stick thing that he waves around, watching out for chandeliers and doors and new technology toes off and things. So, yes, it's very difficult to relax when somebody's in a, in a VR environment because they can't see. But in an A, AR environment, he could go on his round of golf and you can change the intensity and also the immersion on it as well. So you can, you know, still have your sideline, you see, you see your peripheral vision, or you can have it all the way around, or you can have it completely blocked out, and people can see your eyes from the front. They, they make the, the screen change. So you can see if you can see lots of your eye, then people know where you are and you know where you're looking. And if it's all obstructed, then you're off doing something else somewhere else. I think it'd be difficult working with children because children need that sort of eye contact and and 40% of body language goes on in your face. So it's important that we can see faces move. And Kate, I mean, is your scepticism perhaps born of the fact that 
perhaps this didn't take off during the pandemic when it might have been the obvious time? Yes, partly. I mean, I think during the pandemic, uh, there was a lot of quite creative attempts to use technology. I think my favourite story from the pandemic is the team that held its meetings in the uh, Wild West game, uh, Red Dead Redemption 2, which I thought was lovely. But that's that's sort of genuinely creative and fun. This feels like sort of forcing a new paradigm on us. Also, I note that um, in, the, the, in the keynote, they also talked before they launched this about a way to make sure that you're not spending too much time on your screen and then they're offering up a screen to strap onto your face that you basically live in so you know slightly mixed messaging there and i mean elizabeth is this a sort of halfway house then i'm try- i'm still slightly trying to get my head around augmented versus virtual reality but is is that a is it a sort of um a way into something more immersive Yes, because you can see what's going on. You can see what's happening in a room. It's not like putting on the goggles and seeing nothing. You can still see what's going on around you and you can choose how much you want to be involved with it. And people can actually see you because it's very odd when we're sitting around and somebody's got the headset on and you've no idea what they're doing or what they're up to, whether they're just sitting staring in space or the Anne Frank experience or something like that. So it's it's an odd one, but it's it is more. It's going to be more interactive. I can see it being very useful in a multi-screen business environment where you all want to be able to pulling up lots of data and looking at things at the intensity you want to look at them. Um, I think it's fun for home. My ten year old will be all over this. Well, the, you the, keep, keep coming back to your ten year old. Well, again, coming, perhaps well, it's going to be in the, the metaverse 20... before the rest of us. But <laughs> I, he lives in the metaverse. That's where he lives right now. He lives there well, all the time. Well, say hello. Do say hello to him from from all of us. But uh, Elizabeth Clark, Kate Bevan, thank you both very much.